So I'm sat in bed editing the June Roundup and my other half, Paula, says to me, why'd you call it a Roundup? Because you're talking about what you're going to be doing as well as what you did. So it's not really a Roundup. Fair point, I said. What should we call it then? And instantly she came up with an absolute genius idea for renaming the Roundup. Now, Paula and I are both in our 50s. So subsequently, we cannot remember what that genius idea was. Welcome to the July Roundup. Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Yes, it is the July Roundup. I'm sure we'll think of another name one day. Um, my name is Jason, and if you're one of my many new subscribers this month, a big thank you very, very much for subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. It helps the channel, uh, and it's great to talk to people who are also enthusiastic about my hobby. And if you've been a subscriber for a while, thank you for staying a subscriber and coming along and watching the roundup. I've got plenty to be talking about this month. Now, if you're a new to the roundup, then um, what we do in the roundup is we talk a little bit about what happened last month. Uh, make sure you've not missed anything that you might be interested in. And then we talk about what's coming up. And sometimes we chuck a bit of news in, a bit of gossip. Uh, and sometimes we even talk about what one or two other channels are doing as well. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, and as I start recording this, I haven't made a plan, so we're winging it this month. Well, to a point, I do have a plan when it comes to things like what we're going to be videoing next month. Anyway, welcome. Let's get stuck in. I think we started off June with me being on holiday. And for you guys... That was the Panzer IV Repair Diorama from MiniArt. What a massive kit that is. I really love how MiniArt can bring together several kits or parts of kits and come up with something new. Um, it's a really cost-effective way of them getting new products out there for us to buy into. And I think that one worked really, really well. Full interior Panzer, huge kit in its own right, figures all the equipment you need for an infield repair and the diorama base as well. I, phenomenal, phenomenal. And uh, a couple of friends of the channel are currently building it in different formats. In fact, um, as I record this, uh, Rims Models has just completed it. So if you want to see one finished and he's added another model into that diorama base as well, then go and have a look at Rims Models. He's done an outstanding job as he always does. Um, Hugely, hugely beautiful piece of work he's done. Lots of great weathering. He's uh, tried some new things like painting figures that he's not really sort of done seriously before. So it was really great to see that come together. I really enjoyed that. So we've had a bit of a, um, a panzer fest when it comes to that this month across the YouTube community. Brilliant. So sticking with first impressions, our next one was um, a, a white metal figure. We've not reviewed a white metal figure before. Um, so that lovely little uh, Benito miniature uh, of uh, a soldier. Now, figure painting is something that is intrinsic to building dioramas and often even standalone models if you're into your 135 stuff. And I can paint a figure um, and it's passable, but if I'm doing... So a better job with the vehicle and with the diorama I don't want the figures to let it down which but it's important to me that I can try and level up that ability with my figures and get my figures and and my diorama and my vehicles all balanced so that you get an overall uniform look that that presents itself well so I will be painting that figure and um, probably as a, one of my in-between builds at some point relatively soon i have a big diorama implant i've mentioned it before we're going to talk about it a bit more in detail today um, and there's going to be a lot of figures on there uh, military non-military male female so i want to make sure that i've upped my game a little bit and that's going to be the subject to practice on 
So next in the first impressions, and I'll do Wood Wednesday uh, separately, uh, we have the two mini art diorama buildings. Now they're also going to be on this diorama and planning. Um, so we did two because they're quite small little reviews, those. Um, and, and usually I, I'm taking up a 45 minute to an hour slot there. Um, so I felt two sitting in quite, quite nicely. Um, two very, very different but similar um, types of, of model. Um, you've got the, the Norman Street there where you've got the actual diorama base and you've got two buildings in there and you can make up a full scene big enough to put a, 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 um, a, a large 135 scale tank on. Um, and then you've got the other option, which was this German Gastoff, which is just a standalone building. So you need to provide your own base and, and what have you. And that could be part of multiple buildings or just standalone. And it gives you all sorts of, of different options and different price points to buy into. Um, both of them beautiful kits. And, uh, you know, th there's a sort of a mixed reaction. There are people that you can feel definitely aren't keen on on vac form and and yes vac form does have some limitations in terms of the crispness of the molding um texture and so on and so forth but things like texture you can sort that out you can texture your paints there's things you can do for me these those are backdrops they're not the focus so what you're looking for is something that feels authentic has the color but actually your focus is the model and it's a backdrop to the model that you want to look right. It's not the focus of the model. So for me, it's a great way of filling that space fairly quickly. And I've got to say, I love the, the uh, mini art diorama stuff. Um, I, and I've got several of them, many of them planned for this diorama, which we will talk about. Honestly, we're going to. Now, just because of how the month lies with it kicking off, uh, middle of the week uh, we ended up with loads of first impressions this month so the next thing was that tack on 1700 um, Durflinger uh, yeah I gotta say um, and I think it was obvious throughout the video I wasn't really a fan of that kit now I don't have an issue particularly with companies repackaging somebody else's old tool uh, and selling it as their own product. Um, if you look at what Edward have just done with the Hobby Boss Arizona, um, which our friend Jeff Donahue has just bought into and done a, a video on, if you're interested in seeing what that looks like, then uh, that is great because they've chucked resin at it, 3D printed parts, photo etch, and they've taken a base kit that was good and elevated it to an outstanding, very involved, uh, uh, model and uh, you know Jeff's going to tackle that as his first ship build so um, I, that's going to be really really interesting to see how it gets on there but th that is how you take an old kit repackage it and and represent it how, what Tacom have done uh, what was the point of that so not a fan um, yeah uh, it's almost almost tricking the modeler it's almost a con I don't like that. And then we ended the month on the Airfix Classic Golden Hind. Now, some of their classic ship kits, if you buy them now um, as re-releases, that utter dogs, the parts are warped, there's more flash on it than actual plastic part, um, the, the fit that used to be good is no longer good because of the wear of the tooling, you know, I, buyer beware when it comes to airfix classic kits that they're currently re-releasing the way to go if you want one of those classic kits is to hunt out one of the old kits and the and the advantage of the airfix range of course is that it sold in such huge volume back in the 60s and the 70s that there's loads and loads of those older kits unmade unboxed lying around everywhere and you can pick them up relatively cheaply um, I, yeah, there's people on eBay that try and take advantage and tell you that it's rare or it's a classic and, and, and so on and, and up the price. But if, you, if you're patient and you ship, uh, shop around, you can absolutely get yourself a bargain from time to time. So generally, I would say if you want to build a, at the Airfix um, 
HMS Victory, go and find an old one. Go and find one from 80s or earlier. Don't be getting one from the 90s release onwards because they are a bit of a mess. Particularly the Victory because that's been absolutely hammered um, as one of their bigger selling kits of, of all time. The tooling's been hammered and why they don't re-engineer it and come out with a new one because it's clearly a seller is beyond me. But anyway, I keep telling them they keep ignoring me, but I, I'm not the only person who says let's re relaunch it. Having said that, that Golden Hind was stunning. Absolutely stunning. The moulds was crisp. Um, everything was nice and clean, uh, minimal flash. Um, th there was a bit of sync, but nothing that you wouldn't have expected from the time. And you have the advantage of fresh flags, fresh vac, uh, fresh vac foam sails. So you got the best of both worlds in that. And I was really, really pleased with that kit. And I'm looking forward to building it. And with it being 172 scale, that means uh, we can go along and swap out some bits and pieces. Um, we can add in rigging blocks and all sorts of stuff and really make that look something else. So quite a lot of first impressions and we've got more to come and we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we next had a build and the first one of June was the Tiger One diorama, um, which is progressing uh, nicely. All in all, we had two uh, Tiger builds during June. Um, and what I've found is once you move away from the lower hull of that model, um, the fit and the issues that I was having at the start of the build pretty much go away. The turret's gone together really, really well. Um, the um, top plate has gone together really, really well. Um, and um, although you've not seen that yet on video, we're nearly finished with the basic build of the uh the tank itself and we are um, progressing with one or two of the other bits and pieces as well so there's a little bit of trudge at the start of the build series while we're putting everything together um, but the main focus of this build series is going to be putting a diorama together that, that I would like to see as quite authentic so we're going to do quite a bit of weathering and bits and pieces and that's what I'm looking forward to um, and I think uh, so are you guys, you're going to enjoy what, what we do there. So I'm going to be messing around with some new products, the, the Tamiya Snow product, never used before. Um, we're going to be messing around with things like scattered leaves and we've got some various other uh, uh, diorama bits and pieces to add, some resin bits and some drums and stuff. And of course we've got to paint the two buildings and the diorama base. So what you do with that, has a big impact on the overall finish of that model. So the next build we had was the um, X3 Stiletto, um, just for fun. Um, I, it's not the first time I've done a just for fun build, but sometimes it's really difficult to, to uh, do the filming. I work in a kitchen, as I think most of you are aware, um, and that kitchen is a shared space, so it's not always easy to do some video in. So Often when you're watching my videos, uh, my build diaries, and there's a bit of music playing and you can see me doing something, it might be speeded up or whatever, but there's a bit of music playing. That's because I had to video while someone was making breakfast in the background or washing the pots or whatever they were doing. And I, I just couldn't have that background noise on. So that's why we, we do some musical interludes. Uh, and I think that allows me to keep modeling. It's, it stops interrupting the build, if you like, um, and uh, allows me to edit a video together. And it sort of works all right. And, and I, I think I now have established my style, uh, which works for me at least. Um, so yeah, it, that particularly at Christmas with the kids being on holiday and being in the house, all day long, every day, and my partner not in work, and family coming and going, and all that sort of stuff. Um, there was lots of interruptions, and it was almost impossible to do any filming, really. So that's why we did what we did. Uh, we just got it out, we knocked it together. Um, I have a number of kits in my stash, which are sort of uh, either kits that I've bought and then when I've looked at them I'm a bit disappointed and think actually we'll just knock that together or I purposely bought knowing that it's not a great kit but 
would be a bit of fun to put together and I've never built one of them before or something like that. And the uh, X3 Stiletto ticked several of those boxes. I knew it wasn't going to be a great kit. I've not built a Lindbergh kit before. Um, I've never built an X3 Stiletto before. Um, and it's a superb looking aircraft. Uh, and it really does look 50s America. I mean, there's something a bit evil Knievel about it. I really liked it. In fact, I can see the, the Planet of the Apes spaceship from the from the 1970s film. You can almost see it was modelled on it in, in some way. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was a lovely looking aircraft. The kit was very simple, so it was easy to put together. We condensed what was ultimately three hours of video footage got edited down into that one, uh, one video. So that's why there's no talking in that video. It's a slightly different style. It's not what I usually do. I like to... I like to talk um, so yeah uh, it was just a bit of fun knock it together don't take it too seriously uh, just enjoy building which is why I do this hobby I enjoy building stuff so yeah um, yeah it was a good video actually I enjoyed it then of course our um, primary build uh, is the Queen Mary 2 and we've got all those little sub assemblies done those buildings to go on the top deck we've lined the inside of the rooms now and blacked everything out we've got that front um, uh, superstructure face on the bridge on um, so now we're in a position where with the decks and the, and the um, uh, sub assemblies all done we can now just rip through that so that's all the major plastic stuff done yeah there's still lifeboats to do uh, in terms of major plastic parts and they're a bit repetitive um, but we've already built them up largely into a position where they can be painted uh, we've been doing a few at a time cleaning them up if you remember early in the build series at the end of the build series you'd see me doing a few more um, so we've done all of those and cleaned them up and, and we're now just ready to paint and final assembly they have a lot of decals as well so actually the lifeboats are quite involved in their own, in their own right um, but what the intention is now is to get those main structures all sort of on and fitted, decks on and fitted, and then we'll start at the bow uh, and we'll just go through the whole thing, moving forward from bow to stern, adding all the photo etch, doing the super detailing, rigging, final coats of paint, final varnish as we move along and it is almost going to emerge out of its chrysalis of its of being built and turn into uh, and hopefully a really nice replica of what is an incredibly important unique and special ship so uh, yeah I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it I'm still thoroughly enjoying it um, and obviously with uh, help of our friend Stephen we get a really nice understanding of that ship um, more so than you would do with any others but in June, I put out 21 videos and not all of them were builds and first impressions. So we also had a couple of teaser videos. Now the idea of teaser videos, trailer videos, is to give you an idea of what's coming. And what happens is um, people view my videos or any video on YouTube through a combination of being a subscriber and getting a notification or searching for a subject and clicking through videos and coming across it or you can get videos sort of recommended so as you're watching a video you can see um, a stream of other videos that you might be interested in that are sort of connected to the subject and if you look at a lot of model aircraft um, build videos for example you'll see lots of those in the, in that stream. So those are the three areas that draw people into watching um, my videos. So the idea of a, a teaser or a trailer is to put it out there so that people who may not have come across the channel before or may not have been interested in anything we've done on the channel for become aware of the fact that there is a build of this coming up ahead of it coming up so that they've got an opportunity to hit subscribe and not miss it and uh, and see the video that they might be interested in. So that's why we do that. We did the X3 Stiletto um, about a week or so before it came out um, and then we did the Rotodyne which we will come back to in a moment or two. Now another more unusual video was 
this that you can see in the background my dream box so that got delivered just before i went on holiday um, we did a video on putting it together what it is how it works how it closes up and opens up and how it works in the kitchen and then we did a little bit of a tour and that tour's already out of date um, because i've managed to bring all the stuff down from a loft that was um, stranded up there um, a lot of my woodworking tools were up there my um, woodworking machines lathe and and sanding uh, machines and the like were all sort of stranded up there so I've managed to bring all of that down now, except for my paint booth, which is coming down probably this weekend, I would think. Um, and that means I've been sat here now for about a month working um, from, from this. Uh, and it works like a dream. It, it, everything's to hand, but um, I have moved things around. So uh, initially I put all my paints in these areas here. And then actually those are the least accessible areas when you start using it because you stand up from the from the table and you've got to sort of reach across somehow to get to there so you'll notice there's no no paints in there um, really um, I've got some weathering stuff and things like my um, spare etch and decals and bits and pieces like that that I use occasionally that I might go to once at the start of a build um, and then not touch again. So my occasionals have gone there and my paints are now all stacked in the side wings and stuff. So uh, as we use it, you get a bit more accustomed to it. And so, so actually that sort of tour is a bit obsolescent now because although I've still got all those products, they're in, uh, organized in a different way. And you might be able to see, we've got some labels there you can just about see got some labels on on some of them not all of them but the deep ones where you can't see in the back and i've got lots of little things in just put a little list on the front so that was some extra videos we did um but also we have started or i say we me um have started doing some product reviews and these are going to complement the tool reviews because uh we've done a lot of tool reviews uh, and I think we've done all the main basics. I've still got a few more to, to do, a few more that I've filmed to, that are yet to come out, um, uh, including some quite interesting products in there, I think. Um, but now I'm starting to focus on products, which I hadn't done before. And, and when I started doing all of this, I, it really was, as a lot of you know, something to kill a bit of time um, during, during the lockdowns we were having. Um, but now this has evolved into something that I enjoy doing and a, and a full channel. I sort of view the channel as a bit of um, a modelling magazine. So it's part me working my way through my stash and it's part my view on tools and products that I've used and have experience of and sharing that with what is a lot of people that came back to the hobby in the pandemic and are still feeling their way through a hobby that has changed dramatically in the last 30 years so um, I, I'm trying to put in some stuff and I'm you know talking openly and honestly about the products I know I'm not going to comment on stuff I don't know uh, and sometimes I can't compare because I've only used these products um, so I can compare them to other things that methods I might have used but I can't compare I can't prepare um, compare humbrol weathering powders with Vallejo pigments never use Vallejo pigments so I, I can't comment but uh, what I can say is what you can and can't do with a Humbro weathering powder so uh, you get the basic idea so with that in mind we did um, really lovely Bob's Buckles they're a great product little one-man band cottage industry that's making a superb product that modelers can really buy into and like I say uh, they're really aimed at uh, 132 148 scale aircraft uh, by no means think that they're not handy on your large scale 1200 1100 ship builds because they're really really handy for that sort of stuff we also had a quick tips video this month which was uh, the decals which is I have talked about decals in a number of videos and right at the start of the the channel we we built um, uh, a, a German aircraft in 1936 Olympics markings um, and uh, putting the decals on that was a real pig so we talked about how we go around putting those decals on there for example but I hadn't done a standalone this is how I do do my decals 
um, and I had effectively been asked if I could do it so that I could explain it. Um, I hope that I did that okay, um, but yeah, and they, there you go. We did a, a quick, not so quick, quick tips on, on decals, um, but don't believe anyone who says that putting a gloss varnish down first doesn't make any difference to your decals because I've seen some really serious YouTubers with massive, massive 30,000 plus followers say, oh, it doesn't make any difference if you put a decal on, on a flat, matte flat for surface or not. Well, you're wrong, so don't, don't say that if it's not right. Anyway, there you go. You've got my view on decals anyhow. And we did do a little focus on tools video, which was the, the, those little scrapers. They are hard to come by. They're really hard to come by. And I think since they were originally stocked from where I bought them, they've never been in stock again. So um, yeah, very difficult. Although um, I was told by one viewer that they, they seem to be available in Japan. If you come across them and you can get hold of them, absolutely buy them because they're worth their weight in gold brilliant little tools so june's wood wednesday um wood wednesdays are turning out to be really really successful in fact that wednesday tends to be the day i get most of my new subscribers in a month which i think is reflective of the fact that there actually isn't a a, a huge amount of content put out around building wooden model ships um, I think that's partly it and partly that the fact that I've only really just started doing it other than the fly that we've been doing for a little while. I've not really focused on the wooden side of uh, modelling um, and so there is people coming along that haven't hit me. So I expect that'll pitter out at some point but uh, right now every Wood Wednesday I get a nice little spike of new subscribers which is a, a real joy to see. So we did more of HMS uh, Fly, that, that, that progressed on quite nicely. We got the, the whales on there um, and we'll talk about what's coming up with that in a, in a minute. Um, then we did, what else did we do? Uh, we looked at the Revenge model kit, which you've got to remember, I'm reviewing that and saying, well, actually this could be better and that could be better, but it is the budget entry um, of, of, the, of the hobby. There's a huge range of quality difference and cost difference between them. So the fly is at the, um, not the most expensive, but the more expensive, the high middle end of um, model kits. Um, and then you've got sort of the uh, Ocri, some of the billing, some of the Articina Latina at the more budget end where they're using cheaper materials or mass produced common parts to keep that cost down. And that's great because not everyone can afford to spend six, seven hundred pounds on a, on a model. Um, so you, you need to have that range in there. Um, so yeah, I, you know, it, it will build up as a nice kit, but you might want to swap out one or two things just to make it really look the part for me. And then of course we looked at that little blockbuster tool Fabulous little tool. For when you consider it, you can buy it for a tenner. It's not worth making your own because the, the time and effort involved, it would cost you more than just buying it. So a uh, great little product, works really, really well. Um, how long it's gonna last with the, sa the sandpapers is yet to be seen, but um, I don't think it'd be too hard to swap out the sandpapers or even those wooden paddles if they wear too much. So that's what we did in June. Um, it it felt like a very long month um, I, and there was a lot going on that month. I was on holiday at the start of the month with the family, which was really, really nice. It was the school holidays. I'm partway through my eldest daughter's uh, GCSE. So she's about to finish high school. Uh, so there's big changes going on with her. Uh, and then my youngest, Alice, who some of you know because she does a bit of modeling, um, uh, she turned 10. Um, so, um, and is getting into all sorts of stuff. So uh, we had quite a busy month, uh, one way uh, and another, all of us. Um, and then with building the dream box and what have you, uh, yeah, uh, uh, quite a busy month on the home front. So what is coming up in July? Well, let's see, um, It's July is gonna be a, sh a sort of a short month compared to June. Um, tomorrow we have uh, episode 21. 
in the uh, Queen Mary 2 build. Now, if you've not watched that for a while, uh, now's the time to bob back into it because we've moved away from a lot of hull work and um, basic deck work and stuff and we're now about to chuck together all the details. So uh, sub-assemblies, uh, bridge detail and we're, we're um, a gnat's whisker away from lots and lots and lots of photo etch. There's still some more scratch building to do um, so there's a there's a whole area that needs a bit of a rework and needs things adding that aren't there. Um, so drum kits and and all sorts of stuff to come. So now's the time to revisit that if you if you've not watched one or two because it's getting into the real serious make this model sing type stuff. The decals are starting to go on. So um, yeah, uh, definitely worth revisiting that if you've not watched it for a little while. Then the next build um, will be the Rotodyne. So as with all of my build diaries, they come out at 9 p.m. Uh, UK time on a Saturday uh, with live chat. So you're welcome to come along and talk to other modelers that are on there. I have my regulars and then I have different people that pop in depending on the subject. Um, so if you go into the video and you hit the pr uh, that it's premiering, um, look for the little button that says live chat, hit that and it'll open up in the side a little chat pane and you'll be able to say hello and talk to us, ask questions, find out what the weather's like in America and Australia and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah, we just have a have a good old chat to be honest. So um, it's quite a nice little experience. If you've not done it before, if you've, if you've never been on a live chat before, um, you can come in. You don't actually have to say anything. There's a number of people that just come in and say, hello and then watch the video and don't get involved in the chat so uh, as you please um so yeah our the next video the second build video this month will be the rotodyne which is this bad boy here um you'll have seen the teaser for it um fantastic fantastic uh, quite unique um is it a helicopter is it an airplane not quite sure uh but the rotodyne yeah it's coming and actually the kit is lovely yeah Considering um, it was tooled in 1959, this is going together really nicely. And that'll be the first of two Rotodyne builds that we have uh, that come out during July. So you'll see the first two, two parts. Uh, obviously, we're going to be progressing our Tiger diorama. And I will just give you a sneak preview. This is the base. Uh, and you can see we're partway through painting the base. So... Um, I've sort of done the um, street there, just needs to be matted down. Uh, we're just doing the pavement next. Then we've got that area to do. Um, and I'll probably weather this in terms of getting the, the road dusty and dirty and grimy and stuff before we start adding the buildings, which we might um, add on and then weather, and then we can key the weathering in. That's where my head is at the moment, whether we end up doing that who knows, make it up as I go along largely. But yeah, there you can see. So you'll see how I've gone around putting in that um, cobbled street, which I think looks pretty cool. Um, and we're in the process of doing it there. So you can see we've got two colors down uh, there. I usually generally go with three, but all will be explained in the build. So that's it for uh, what's coming up build wise in July. Other than we do have some more um, HMS flies. Now it's a shorter video um this month and we're starting the second planking uh and we're going to start at the whales and move up so we'll be dealing with cutting cutting around the gun ports and and that sort of stuff and obviously it's the outer planking and on the model it's shown as wood varnished wood rather than painted so we can't be putting holes in and filling it so there's a different approach to doing that so that's quite interesting to see how I go about doing that anyway, I think. So we've got more fly coming. There's a book review going to be in there. Um, and uh, we look at a tool as well that's, um, I was about to say specific for wooden modeling, but actually uh, railroad modeling uses this uh, same tool as well, or, or you can do if you've got it. So also in July, we're gonna have a couple of tool reviews, a quick tips. Um, and we're also going to have a look at an additional first impressions video um, on a Monday 
Uh, so usually they're quite short ones if I put them out on a Monday. Um, so yeah, we're going to be, uh, I think the quick tip is going to be glazing. So I did say to uh, my friend um, Ron over at the model ship that he's got some big windows on his bridge of his HMS Rodney that is building in and they'd look great if he glazed them. He subsequently went out and bought some uh, um, crystal clear so I've done a little video showing you the principles on how to glaze with crystal clear so although it's aimed at Ron it's aimed at anyone who's never used the product before really so look out for that because um, it's quite an interesting video if you've never done it before and we're also going to have a look at a product I've got a product video uh, and we'll use the product show you what it looks like give you a view on it um, I, I particularly like this brand but what did I think of the product uh, I'm not going to give too much away, but um, it was quite an interesting little review, actually, and I surprised myself. When we did it, it didn't turn out the way I was sort of expecting it to, to be honest. So we've got three first impressions videos during um, the month. Um, no, four, I beg your pardon, because we've got the extra little one on a Monday. Um, but you'll be seeing the... Um, Ravel formerly Matchbox Stranra, that'll be this month. Um, the Ravel um, 570 scale Queen Mary, um, that will be coming out, so that's quite an interesting um, first impressions. And the Mini R uh, Lifer Wagon 135, uh, deliver one basically Mercedes 170 delivery van. So you'll be seeing all of those this month, which leads nicely onto what am I filming this month, ready for ready for August, September. That'll be the easier then. Okay, so uh, not in any particular order. The order I'm showing you is not the order they're gonna come out. Um, and we do have some um, first impressions already filmed for um, August. So like the, um, uh, the Type 320 is planned for August. Um, the dogfight doubles that we reviewed, uh, um, in the last roundup, that'll be uh, that'll be out in August, and then these will kick in. So we have a tank, um, nice early tank um, based on um, the uh, Academy kit. I think I think it's based on the Academy kit. I might be wrong there. Um, it doesn't feel particularly Academy inside, but there is a relationship between Airfix and Academy, so that's why I think think it's an old academy kit but uh, I'm not 100% sure um, but actually this is one of the cheaper um, 135 scale um, tank kits that you can get from Airfix so I thought it'd be interesting to see um, it's a nice early war um, gives us two options um, so yeah uh, and it's a skill level two so it shouldn't be too difficult um, so yeah um, We'll have a look in there. Uh, so I'll be filming that this month, uh, ready for back end of August, early September time. So look out for that. If you like your tanks, um, the Airfix tanks tend to be slightly cheaper than other brands. So, um, and they they are, they upgrade them a little bit. So where you where it was a kit that used to have a rubber band track, they'll will put link and length in as well and so, something like that. And quite often there's quite a bit of aftermarket available for them because they were other brands. So if we can work out who made it originally, because I'm sure it's not Airfix, then uh, you can access all sorts of other stuff. And we do have aftermarket in there and we will be looking at it. So sticking with Airfix, Lancasters. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Lancasters in the modeling world at the moment. Somebody brought out a big one or something like that. I don't know. Um, well, actually I do know, of course I know. Um, that this one has the advantage that it will fit on your shelf or your modeling bench. Um, yeah, it, it's not a wing nut wings quality kit, I have no doubt. However, of the three Lancasters that Airfix currently have in their range, this is the most expensive one um, because it's the Dam Busters one, which is a bit odd because the Lancaster was actually fairly heavily stripped down for the Dam Busters raid, so you've not got the front guns or the top gun turret and stuff on but it's more expensive uh, I'm guessing we've got a, a bouncing bomb in there as well 
Uh, now I had a quick look at the kit when I first got it, that was a little while ago now, so it would be nice to do a proper first impressions of it. When this was first released it even came with a dam, believe it or not. I don't don't think there's a dam in there, I don't remember there being a dam in there, so they've dropped the, the dam now unfortunately, but there you go. Now it is the 80th anniversary of the dam bus, what's, what's going on with me light, there you go. Uh, 80th anniversary of the dam busters next year, and I plan to build this for the anniversary, which is why I've got it in my stash. So let's do the first impressions now, and then next year we can link it all together. It's almost like there's a plan. So, having done um, our, our airfix stuff, let's go and have a look at Tamiya. Now, we have a Tamiya ship. Now, I know that's going to make a lot of people happy. There's a lot of people that, one way or another, like a Tamiya ship. Um, but, um, this is the old 1970s tooling that you can still buy, that, you, that Tamiya still offer. Now this is the, I think it's 2013 updated version, which is a little odd because this um, was an updated version. Put, they put some new parts in it, not quite sure exactly what they were. Quite often it's just a new stand um, and that might well be the case. But it's the updated version, 2013. And what's strange about that is, um, 2013 is two years after they released their new all singing, double the price, triple the price, um, Yamato, what in the same scale. So why they didn't drop this off, um, I don't know, although I suspect I might be able to guess, um, and it might be to do with price. Now, if you buy this new, it's around about 80 quid uh, in the UK. I bought this from a model show, I managed to pick it up, uh, poor bloke selling, selling, um, um, models, I think he was a house clearance guy or something, he had a lot of car kits and bits and pieces and he had this lurking in the back and he sold it for 60 quid, which was about the going rate for it maybe five years ago, something like that, um, so uh, who knows how much he got it for, next to nothing I'm guessing, so I'm guessing he made his money on it, but I still consider that I got myself a bargain, um, so I, I bought this last year. Now, the reason I bought it is um, I actually built the 1970s tooling in the 80s as a teenager, um, and it was the largest 1350 uh, kit I, I built because it's a, it's, a, it's a big old kit, and it was next to my KG5, Prince of Wales, Bismarck, Tirpitz, all Tamiya kits. Um, uh, and it was quite an enjoyable build, and as it's Tamiya, it goes together quite well, but I'm interested to see can I throw some aftermarket at this and get this to the same or similar place as their expensive one for less money? I think I can, absolutely sure of it. The, the biggest difference for me is that they put more detail on the hull of the new kit. But even with the new kit, which comes with extra etch, it's basically to the standard of their new release kits. It's got extra etch and the plastics stronger for the masts and bits and pieces like that but fundamentally it's the same but it's 260 quid so i'm saving 200 pounds which means i have 200 pounds to play with for aftermarket so even if i don't look at 3d printed parts i reckon i can come up with something just using photo etch that will match the brand new kit uh, and want to prove that it's possible to take one of these old kits and make it modern standard and look brilliant without having to spend silly money. So that's the plan with the Yamato at some point and absolutely not promising when that will be um, because I've got some ship kits in the pipeline. We've got, we, when we finish the Queen Mary 2, we're gonna go back to the Arizona and we're gonna finish that. And then my principal build is gonna change to a diorama, which we will talk about. We're gonna talk about it in a minute. So I'll also be filming this, and this will be for the August uh, Wooden Wednesday slot. So I'm sort of doing uh, a wooden ship kit review every other month um, uh, is sort of where I am, because I've not got that many wooden kits to, to actually go through, although um, I'll be showing you another one in a minute that we added to the stash this month. Anyhow, um, this is Billings Boats. Now, we've looked at um, Amati, We've looked at Victory models, which is sort of a matty anyway. 
um, and we've looked at Caldercraft uh, with the with the Mary Rose. Um, so I thought it'd be nice to chuck a, a Billings boat in. Oh, and we've done Ocri as well, haven't we? So I thought it'd be nice to chuck a Billings boat in. A Billings have been around for a long, long time. They're one of the veterans of wooden model ship kits. Um, they are not considered to be at the top end, but they do some really nice kits. Um, they're sort of in the middle uh, where you get um, a combination of um, a fairly decent kit with some common parts. So uh, they're sort of sort of in that area. And if I think about, I've got three, I think Billings, might be four Billings kits. Uh, and one of them I've got is HMS Warrior, which is 1.3 meters long. It's a huge kit. And I started it actually, uh, and then stopped it because I was building it in the attic and had no way of getting it in and out of the attic. Um, so now I'm in the kitchen. That is something that could come back at some point. Um, and, and the point I was going to make is it's a lovely kit. It's got all the, all the basic stuff there, but a lot of the fine detail, the carving work and stuff like that is missing that you would get included as photo etch in an Amati or a Victory Models or a Caldercraft kit. So they're not quite there, but but when it comes to um, wooden ships like this Viking ship, where it is no thrills, and this is the one that's um, on display in a museum, you can go and actually look at this, it's the one they famously dug up, then uh, you know what, this Billings do as good a job as anybody. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what's in this. I bought this second hand from someone on eBay and uh, it needed to go to a better, uh, a better home, as in a home where it's gonna get built. So uh, at some point I'm, I'm looking forward to this because it's quite different to any other ship kit I've got. Um, so yeah, um, really, really nice looking kit from the outside. So it'd be interested to compare building boats to the other brands you've seen. And then next time we do one, we'll do an Artesina Latina kit and you can get a, another view of a different brand again. Um, and then you can see the differences between the various brands. I've not got one of every brand because there's quite a few brands out there, but it, it will give you a basic view of the spectrum of standards you can get. So that's what we're filming for August, September. Now, also in July, I'm going to be um, planning a new series of uh, videos, which is going to start um, I guess initially being interdispersed with my first impressions videos and effectively they are first impressions videos but they're not because they're kits that have already started. So we're going to be doing a, a series of um, visiting the shelf queens. Uh, what I'm going to call it I don't know it might be visiting the shelf queens I don't know um, but I uh, if you don't know what a shelf queen is, it's basically a model you started and didn't finish or haven't finished yet is how I prefer to think of it at least. Um, and there's a whole variety of reasons why that could be. Um, so we'll be visiting some, um, some shelf queens um, and putting them in there. So uh, to give you a flavour of what they could be, I've got a 1200 Bismarck, which I was intending to um, get going on restarting but um, my friend Steve over at the model shed he's a, he's just started his um, build so I don't want to be doing um, a Bismarck 1200 Bismarck build at the same time that he is he's got the Pontos set I've got the Pontos set I've also got the uh, Mark 1 set and the Edward set and some resin parts and bits and pieces to go with it. So I'm going to do uh, a Bismarck ultimate build at some point and it's a shelf queen. Now, that doesn't mean we'll be restarting it, actually going to start it again. I had a big issue in with the decks and the decks raising. Um, there was an issue with the adhesive, I think. Um, so I need to revisit it. I also want to do it in a different way. My, my thought process has changed. So Need stripping down and scouting again. So that's one. Um, I've got a 1200 scale Macassa, which is a beautiful kit. Um, I've got a one, uh, 144 scale um, Ravel um, Flower Class Corvette, with, which is halfway through and, and got stopped because I had to abandon the attic in a hurry because of an insect problem and I never went back to it. Um, I've got an, uh, an old Tacom Road Roller. Um, beautiful kit from the 70s, part done. 
Um, I, I've got a number of wooden kits. I've got some part works and all sorts of loads and loads of stuff. Oh, and I've got a 1350 Arc Royal, um, which is basically had a few things added to the hull and not much else. Um, and again, uh, I had to abandon uh, my, my loft space uh, and that got left there. So I've got a number of shelf queens and what we're going to do is we're going to visit some of them and say, well, what's the kit like? I know I've started building it. Uh, this is my experience of it. This is what you get uh, and, and so on and so forth. So slightly different to a first impressions because we're not opening the box and having a look at it and going through it in detail for the first time. It's something I've started building, but some of these kits have, I've had as a shelf queen for a few years and I probably need to go back and get re-enthused because at some point we're going to be putting shelf queen builds back in the program uh, and getting them finished because I don't like the fact that they're sat there doing nothing. So as we're talking about plans I am finally, yes I'm going to do it, finally going to talk about um, a diorama. I am planning a diorama and in July I'm going to be starting to do some detail. Now I'm not sure when I'm building it. It's going to be the principal build when it comes along. So um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to follow in the footsteps of the Tiger One uh, diorama that we're doing now. That is, it's going to be a big base. It's a suspended shelf as the base. Um, it's going to have a number of uh, buildings on it to make a, a German early war street scene. We're talking end of 1939. Or, or maybe very early 1940 um, sort of period. Or in my mind, a few weeks into the war. And on there, the main model is going to be the uh, the uh, Tamiya Famo tank transporter with the little Polish 7TP that we reviewed a little while ago um, on there under a, under a tarpaulin. And then there's going to be some civilian vehicles um, like the uh, vehicle that we did in in February, the little uh, 170 Mercedes um, that we did in red and cream, that's going to go on there. Um, potentially, we could put the fire truck on there. Um, I've got staff cars that could go on there. All sorts of bits and pieces, and lots of figures. I've got civilians, elderly civilians, kids, motorbikes, um, uh, members of the Hitler Youth. All that sort of stuff I'm going to put together into a street scene with this FAMO tank transporter parked up there. Um, I think last month I shared the, the picture of that. So I'm planning all that. Um, what else do I need to make that work? You know, um, so like street lighting, that sort of stuff. Um, I've got street lights, but I've got two of this type and one of that type. What I really need is probably half a dozen of the same. So I, there's all sorts of things to think about. And then we will be looking at how we put that together. Now, I, in my mind, it was going to be a winter build, but it's realistically, it's going to be some point next year because it will be a principal build, which means I need to finish um, my Queen Mary 2. I then want to finish my Arizona. That needs to get finished and done over the line. And then this FAMO thing is going to uh, slot in. Now, I always want to have a ship build on the go. Principally, I'm a model ship builder, so there'll always be a ship on the go. So that means my secondary build has to become a ship. And it's getting those those sort of things to align. Um, so um, in terms of my um, secondary builds, I'm I, I've I've got an urge to build a German warship, so I could do one of the two 1400 scale um, ex Heller um, German ships I've got. I think it's the, the Scheer and the Gneisenauer uh, that I've got. I, I could do one of those, or I could do the a Japanese Yukakaze um, destroyer, which has got aftermarket, and we could go to town on the weathering with that and, and make that look proper. Pacific weathered um, so I'm, that, that's another thing I'm really quite fancy doing as well so I'm between those two as a secondary build making the tank transporter the main focus build so that's realistically going to probably be springtime next year um, because we've got the um, uh, 132 
um, wing nut wings build coming up and that's a secondary build so that absolutely has to finish um, and we're going to be doing that um, uh, to a, a museum standard so we'll be taking our time on it is what I'm basically saying. Right, other news. We don't do this very often, but uh, when there's things of interest, I do like to talk about it. So um, let's start with um, the Wingnut Wings uh, Gota. Um, I've finished planning that. I now have everything I need for that. I've got all the paints. Um, you will have seen in the trailers um, for that that I'm planning to turnbuckle rig it. Um, so uh, I'm going to be using fishing line for that. Um, not easy line and the reason for that is it's got a big wing structure and fishing line will just give it the extra rigidity that, that it needs from that now uh, I, if you don't rig it I think the model is probably self-supporting but if we're gonna gonna rig it then we can put some extra uh, strength in uh, I personally think it's easier to use fishing line than easy line on a large-scale model it's certainly easier to use easy easy line on a 172 scale or even maybe a 148 scale aircraft that needs rigging so when i did uh, airfix's new tool tiger moth a couple of years ago easy line was the perfect solution for that and it came out really well but on a 132 scale aircraft fishing line i think works better and you've got a scale that you can really show off those um bobs buckles turnbuckles so we will be turnbuckle rigging it um it's a little bit more time consuming but the process is actually not difficult not complicated um it's just there's a lot of rigging to do on the on the gota um, and a lot of planning needed to get it done so um my next step is to go through the instructions and i'll be in july possibly putting a video together to do a build introduction um, ready for when we've finished the tank. So uh, we've still got a bit of a way to go yet on the tank, but I'm getting myself sort of all geared up, ready for um, that build to hit the road running. Uh, what will inevitably happen is I'll start building that before you see the Tiger finish. Um, I won't start it till I finish the Tiger, but you're two or three weeks behind where I am as a general rule. So. In July, we will be planning that and we, we might uh, film the start of that. So don't think it's not coming. It's definitely coming. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to building it. I really, really am. Um, in other news, Airfix are phasing out one of their paint pot ranges. So if, like me, you prefer these to these, then like me, you're going to be disappointed because Airfix or Humbrol are phasing these out in favour of these. Now, um, there are still some of these left on the website. There's a limited number of colours left. So if, if like me, you prefer these and they've got colours on there that you regularly use, I would say go and buy them now because currently that contains the same amount of paint as that, but that's half the price of that. So let's just talk about this for a minute, shall we? I'm not quite sure what Humbrol's game is here, but that has the same amount of paint as their tinlets, 14 mils. That has 70 mils. That is more expensive than that. More to the point, and I know a little bit about dropper bottles because of my day job, that as a dropper bottle doesn't work for paint that does and i'll tell you the big difference is it's the plastic being used for the bottle uh, also to a certain certain degree the nozzle i don't like the nozzle on this it clogs um, and um, it doesn't decant very well humbrol paint tends to be quite uh, have quite a thick viscosity um, and the result is that it needs a lot of mixing before you can use it and that doesn't lend itself to a dropper bottle that's made out of a plastic that's not squeezy so I, I struggle with these dropper bottles over any other dropper bottle so much so that I decided 
I was going to continue buying these because you can get in them and you can stir them really, really easily. Brilliant pots. Um, I absolutely love them. So much so that, that as I empty these, I'm going to keep them and decant the dropper bottles into them because they're dreadful. They are the worst dropper bottle on the market. And I'm not sure why I'd be buying a dropper bottle in a plastic bottle that you can't squeeze because it's cheap, horrid plastic. Um, when I could buy that and get more paint in a dropper bottle that actually works. Don't know what you're doing, Humbrol, but that's really bad news for me as a modeler, for others out there who, who like your products, and ultimately for you because there'll be other people like me who won't want to buy into that. Well, there you go. That's the, that's the Humbrol news. Um, on a better front, uh, let's talk about what one or two other channels have been up to. So I've already mentioned Rims Models, who's just completed his mini art big build. Um, if you've not seen it, get over, your, over there and have a look at it. It's a great, great build. So that's worth checking out. Uh, Jeff Donahue, friend of the channel, um, his channel's growing nice and steadily and he's got uh, currently the mini art um, Austin 1918 pattern. I think he's at time of recording this five or six episodes in um, and that's looking really good and he recently finished his a mini art coal wagon, um, bright yellow wagon and he even put real coal in it. Definitely worth going to see if you've not seen that, go and check that out. Our friend Oscale Modelling um, he's venturing out of the world of ships and building his first ever tank. Uh, but what's actually more interesting than that is he's gone from comments about, I don't know how people can build more than one model at a time to having two models on the go at the moment. Um, and he's even started, he went to a model shop for a tin of paint and bought several model kits. So he's become a real modeler now. Well done, Peter. And um, if you've not checked out our scale modeling, it's worth doing so. He does it from the perspective of being a beginner. Um, he, he's got some skills um, uh, and that really shows in his builds uh, and, he, and he's got some patience, which you, you need in this hobby. Um, and he does, he does battle on and progress. And he's building um, a, a Ravel kit that's a, a bit of a dog um, in places, but he's getting through it and pulling it together and, and making the most of it. And he's learning as he goes, he, you know, he's learning about how he needs to organise himself and his instructions and bits and pieces as he works through that. So if you've not checked out Oscale Modelling or you haven't checked it out recently, go and have a look. Um, I'm quite enjoying watching him do the tank build. He's doing that with some buddies. He's been doing some live streams as well. So there's quite a bit going on over there. Steve at the Model Shed, I have already mentioned this, but he's just launched, excuse the pun, um, his 1-200 Bismarck. Um, he's still just finishing off his uh, Tamiya Mosquito as well. Now if you saw his hood build it's going to be very similar to the hood build. He's going to try and get it accurate. He's using reference material to, to do that uh, and he's got the advanced Pontos set which throws everything except for the kitchen sink at it. So uh, there is still stuff missing though even with the Pontos upgrade set there's no um, there's no lift on the funnel, for example. So I'd be interested to see how he tackles that. I've already done that on my build, uh, on my uh, queen, I've, uh, shelf queen. I've already uh, put the funnel together and there's quite a bit of scratch building needed, electrical boxes and bits and pieces that are not in any of the aftermarket stuff. Um, so I'd be interested to see how Steve gets on with that. I'm looking forward to it. If you haven't checked out the model shed, then do so because you're not going to want to miss his Bismarck build. Good luck with it, Steve, and I'll be seeing you along on one of your premieres soon, hopefully. Now, if you like your cars, go and check out A4 Garage. He's working on the um, 300 SL at the moment, which is the uh, Tamiya kit that I did a first impressions of earlier this year. Um, but a word of warning, if you're going to go and watch his channel and, and watch what he's doing, then be prepared to give up your hobby and take up crochet or something. Because for me, he's the best model builder on uh, YouTube at this moment in time. Uh, incredible stuff. It, it, it looks more realistic than the real car when he's done.
Uh, another friend of the channel, Greybeard's Models, he's working on the uh, Panzer IV big build that Rims Models has just com uh, completed that we did the first impressions of uh, last month. Um, and he's doing that in a different setting with um, uh, like a, um, a tank repair factory in the background. So he's doing it as a slightly different diorama, uh, but basically using the same kits. So really interesting to see that coming together. Um, so it's worth popping in and um, having a look at what Greybeard Models is doing. Um, again, relatively new channel, um, but he's, slow, he's slowly growing because what he does is really quite interesting. So definitely worth going to see him if you haven't already. John Alex Scale Modeling, um, last seen working on a 148 scale Barumba, um, but then he went and did a holiday thing for a couple of weeks. So I imagine he's catching up on his modeling, but if you've not seen his Brumba build, it's worth doing. He has a, uh, he has a lovely video style uh, where I think he must film it and then do a voiceover um, uh, and it comes across really well. So he's got quite a polished video for what is a relatively new channel. Um, so if you've not seen it, absolutely worth checking it out. So I can't possibly mention all the channels that I actually dip in and out of during the month. There's so many great modeling channels out there, but those are the ones that are capturing my imagination right now. Okay, so I did add some stuff to the stash. Would you like to see what I got? So I stumbled across a little bargain and I couldn't resist it. And we added this to the stash this month. So this is the Caldercraft HMS Jealous which is actually a French um, frigate that was captured um, by the British four or five years after she was launched, I think. Um, they converted her for Royal Navy use um, and then became a British ship, So, which is why part of the Nelson's Navy series from Caldercraft. Now, this retails currently for around about £300 in the UK. So imagine my delight when I pick this up for £125. So everything is in there. I have checked it all out. It's all good. It's never really been used and it does have upgraded cannons in there as well. So uh, one of the things you can do with Caldercraft kits is if you register them, you can get the updated parts as they come out. So that's been done. It's got turned brass barrels rather than cast brass barrels. So yeah, um, absolute stuff deal um, looking forward to building this it will be a really really nice build as you can see did I call it a frigate it's a brig I beg your pardon it's a brig two mastered brig uh, we've even got the copper tiles for for it in there and everything so absolute bargain eBay can work for you sometimes. Well, I think that brings you up to date with where I am and the world of model kit stuff and what I'm up to and what I'm doing next and all that sort of stuff. All that remains to be said is a massive, massive thank you for your support, for following the channel, for all the comments that you leave on the videos, greatly appreciated, and for supporting the live chat on a Saturday. Um, that's a lot of fun for me. Um, I'm still enjoying this, so we're going to do more and more. So in a minute, as the titles run, I'll have my uh, uh, model kit building plan roll up so you can pause that and have a look at what the plans are and know exactly what we're up to and, what, uh, and what's coming along. If you've not looked at the um, channel page for a little while, do so. Click on there, have a look in the um, playlists and just check out things that you might have missed or things that were... Um, put out as videos before you subscribed. There's loads of stuff in there. We're at 400 plus videos now um, and not two years old yet. So lots more coming, lots more to do. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you next Saturday. Thank you very much. Take care, enjoy your modelling and I'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.